You've just been hired to film a wedding. Which camera do you grab in your arsenal? Is it something like this, the DJI Ronin 4D, or your iPhone? What you just saw was a mix of iPhone 15 Pro footage and Ronin 4D footage. Can you guess which shots were the iPhone? Leave them down in the comments below and the answer will be later in this video. Now I know what you're thinking, Michael. Really, another one of these videos? But hear me out. Gerald Undone and Patrick Tommaso actually just did a very interesting video talking about the iPhone 15 Pro's camera. And the results of that video proved that this camera can hit just under 14 stops at dynamic range. And the Ronin 4D just happens to have an advertised 14 stops at dynamic range, which really means it's lower. So just from a dynamic range standpoint, I thought it'd be an interesting shootout. I mean, the fact that this is a full frame sensor and this is less than one inch, I'm and by the way, if you didn't see my last video and you're wondering what the heck this thing is, we made an SSD holder for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max that attaches an SD to the back of your phone, giving you an amazing hand grip and it's still on sale. You can check it out in the link in the description below. So here is the big question that I'm trying to get answered is where exactly can an iPhone 15 Pro fit into a filmmaker's workflow. Because I recognize that we're all not just going to go immediately sell our main cameras and have this be our only camera. But there's a couple situations where I genuinely feel like this will fit perfectly. And after having tested it in a number of situations, I feel even more confident in what it can and can't do. This past weekend, I actually helped film a wedding. And while I certainly wasn't going to be full experimental and primarily only shoot on the iPhone without talking to the couple prior, my main cameras were definitely the Ronin 4D and the Pocket 6K Pro. But throughout the day, in certain different lighting scenarios, I broke out the iPhone and kind of stuck it next to the 4D as I shot the same clip just to see what each camera sensor could capture. Now, as I mentioned, both of these cameras technically have built-in stabilizations. You don't add another gimbal to the 4D, it is a gimbal itself. And it's basically a larger, more exaggerated version of what's happening inside the tiny little uh, lens system here in the iPhone for optical stabilization. Now, of course, the iPhone has digital on top of that. And if you use a third-party app like Filmic or Blackmagic app, you can add various different levels of stabilization. But of course the 4D being fully optical stabilization and it's got its fourth access for the Z axis. So it removes the kind of up and down wobble you get when you're walking or running. However, you can hack your way to that level of stabilization on the 15. The very new popular kind of combo is to go with the three or five X telephoto zoom. And then you turn on action mode, which does lower you in resolution to 2.8K, but it gives you some pretty insane results where you can be full on sprinting. And as long as you keep your subject relatively in the center of frame, you can get amazing results, very similar to the sort of stabilization you get on the 4D. Both of these cameras actually shoot in the same codex. They both shoot in various flavors of ProRes. Now I pretty much shoot ProRes LT for everything because for what I do, that seems to be the best balance of still big file sizes, but still gives me really good quality and control over the image. A lot of people have been commenting since the updates on my videos asking where ProRes 444XQ went on the Blackmagic camera app. I don't have an official response from Blackmagic. People have said that the 444XQ mode wasn't actually that. It wasn't like a real version. Is what it is. Maybe it'll come back in the future as real XQ. But for now, ProRes HQ is it's good. Now, while the iPhone wins in versatility for its form factor, waterproofness, and having three lenses built into that small form factor, versatility also comes with the accessories you can attach to it. And this is where the 4D definitely and obviously wins. Something like weddings, you have to have microphones attached, sometimes multiple audio sources. And while currently the 4D only has a single mic jack, it soon will have the expansion pack, which will bring things like XLR, SDI in and out. And besides that, you have an actual HDMI I can plug into power in addition to those mic sources. We're here, although people are testing out multiple dongles where you can split things, it can be a hassle and there may be issues depending on what accessories you use. 
Now, by far the biggest limitation of this camera when it comes to filming in various scenarios is low light. This is just kind of a science thing. This has less than a one inch sensor and this has a full frame sensor, astronomically larger. So when it came time for the reception, it was outdoors. It was just after blue hour, right when it pretty much got pitch black, but you can still see a little bit of blue in the sky. And the single only light source was some string lights from above. And so I had the 4D cranked all the way up to eight to sometimes 12,800 ISO. And the iPhone, I should mention that I didn't even use the Blackmagic app because again, this was a hired job. These iPhone shots, I just kind of had to make an afterthought for obvious reasons. So I just used the native app in the ProRes log mode. So I have no idea what settings the iPhone decided to go with, but I figured it would try to get me the best image possible. And in terms of noise, the iPhone operated pretty much as you would expect. On the main sensor, it seems like I'm able to get a somewhat decent image. I think if you're watching this back on a phone, it probably looks okay. If you're watching it on a computer, you go, yikes. But the real issue is the same thing that has plagued the iPhone cameras for the past handful of years that ProRes and Log just can't fix. And that is the crazy lens flares that you get. And I'm a fan of lens flares, trust me. During this wedding, I was trying to find the lens flares with my pocket and the 4D all day long. But there's a difference between this type of lens flare and this. These are the type of lens flares that in a ghost hunting show, the person would call flying orbs. Well, the video wasn't of a person, sort of dancing orbs. Now, a lot of people were speculating, and I mean, Apple even said in their keynote that there's some new lens coating, and they didn't say it directly affects this issue because Apple's never going to say, hey, this is a big issue. And I can't tell with certainty because I'd have to film like with an iPhone 14 and 15, like right next to each other on the same thing. But the orbs or lens flares look a little bit more transparent or a little bit like almost like someone turned the opacity down. So maybe the coating helps a little bit. If you are someone who shoots in this sort of environment and the iPhone is your primary camera, this is where I really want to test adding lenses on top of it. Now, in my experience, the only thing that really got rid of it was like the DOF adapter, which Beast Grip, uh, funny enough, wearing the shirt again, they just make good shirts and they sent me a bunch of them. Again, this isn't a sponsored video, but their DOF adapter, which allows you to attach any EF lens to the iPhone and gives it kind of the more natural depth of field of a larger camera. They're actually working on their Mark III and they just released a video on some kind of teaser sample footage and it looks really good. I have a feeling that the light going through a regular full lens and going through those optics will kind of make those lens flares look more natural, at least they have in the past with previous depth of field adapters. So besides the glowing orbs, while the low light is half decent on the main sensor, uh, when you go to the ultra wide, better than previous years, but not really usable in my opinion that I would give to somebody other than just like the content of the clip itself is more exciting than the uh, technical issues of it. But the 5X telephoto just, no, straight up phone footage doesn't look great in uh, pitch black low light. <laughs> Shooting weddings is basically the most extreme version of can a camera be versatile. They've got to be fast, they've got to be good on battery life, good autofocus, good low lights, the whole nine yards of testing your skills as a filmmaker, photographer, and testing the camera itself. So having seen where this performs in a wedding environment, I can confidently say that throughout any other event or type of filmmaking situation, I think you should look at its camera as a versatile tool. Again, it's not gonna replace your A camera, but there were genuine moments where I found the iPhone to be very useful, and it is clips that I actually included in the final kind of clips that I sent off to the company who's gonna edit the video. For example, when we were walking back from one of the areas we were shooting, we were going back towards the venue itself. It had hit me that I didn't really have a wide shot of the venue and the sun was in a kind of nice spot. And I had a 45 mil on my pocket 6K, so I didn't have a wide angle on me. 
So I just kind of stood there for like 10 seconds, opened up my iPhone, recorded on log, and it looked pretty good on the phone. And I think if they decide to include that shot, it will absolutely match to the pocket just fine. Another scenario that I think about often is with water. I love shooting near water. Anyone who has shot with me before knows that I will push the cameras to the limit. One scenario I can't wait to test out is when you take your, again, normal camera, you get those just above water, around the water sort of shots. But then if you want something where like the lens is actually like halfway through the water, half sticking out, or it's in a spot where it's really gonna get wet or splashed by a wave, you can just use the iPhone for those quick insert shots that make the viewer kind of go, whoa, that's a lot. Did they really just like splash the camera? How did they get that shot? And again, there's so many shoots like weddings where you don't have the time. It's awesome to be able to just stick your phone in the fridge and grab that insert shot real quick and know that it's gonna look pretty good. And by the way, if you've been waiting to hear which of those shots from the beginning were from the iPhone, the answer is three, six, seven, and eight. It mixes in pretty well, right? And even in the low light on the main sensor, as long as you can avoid the crazy orb lens flares, you get some pretty awesome results. So in the end, where do you lie? Because where I lie is exactly how I figured this video would go. It's a place where I'm not in any rush to sell my bigger cameras, but it is amazing having the knowledge, knowing that the footage I capture on the phone can then be inserted into videos shot on bigger cameras it's just really cool, and that's a great time to be in. But let me know what you guys think down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.